Hey everybody, I'm Dustin from Dust and Wood. Today I'm going to show you how I made this table and some of the steps it took to get it to look the way that it looks in these photos. One of the mills that I frequently order wood from sent me this slab for free because they had previously made a mistake on one of my orders, so this was their way of saying sorry. You can imagine how excited I was to see this slab because the grain in it I mean, when you look at it from here, you can see there's some really nice grain in this slab. I knew pretty quickly what I wanted to do with this slab, but it took me two years to find a buyer that wanted the same thing. And when I did, I was really excited. So I got to work on it by sizing it up. And that's what I was doing there with the Festool track saw, just cutting it to the size that my client wanted. And here I'm removing the bark with a draw knife. This is the easiest way to remove bark, and in these inclusions, I'm just using a flathead screwdriver, taking out as much of that loose debris as possible, and then I'm going to get after it with a wire wheel and a drill. I use an aggressive wire wheel, that way it actually really digs into the wood and cleans it up really nicely so you can get a really good bond between your wood and your resin. The design of this table doesn't allow for a natural wood live edge. So I pitched an idea to my client that I would use live edge offcuts from previous tables to make the edge look natural, even though it's going to be resin. And they thought this was a pretty cool idea. Here's my form all laid out. Uh, one thing that I like to do with all of my forms is run a bead of silicone around the bottom of the perimeter, and then I'll lay that down in place and I'll run a bead of silicone along the inside and then along the outside of the perimeter. But in this case, I didn't do it on the inside. The reason for that was because of the live edge look. I wasn't going to be trimming up these edges any. So I didn't want any silicone getting up into that resin and making that edge look kind of weird. The resin of choice for this table is a deep casting resin. It's from a company out of Quebec and they are called Designer Epoxy. I like their product. I've been using it for a while now and it's never steered me wrong. It's never treated me bad. Um, really, I've got nothing bad to say about it. So I'm going to continue to use their product. This was about a 60 liter pour, maybe a little bit more. Probably one of my bigger pours for a single slab table. So it was making me a bit nervous because I just didn't want to have any problems. One important step is to clamp your wood down. The wood's going to want to float in the resin. And if it floats overnight or when you're not watching, it's a pain to push back down because then you introduce a whole bunch of bubbles into that resin and things get ugly from there. After seven days, the resin has cured and I can move on to the wide belt sander. Sanding this live edge down flat and leaving it nice and smooth probably would have looked all right, but I wanted to add some texture to it just to give it something a little extra. Here I'm using a drill with a brass wire wheel and this worked all right. Uh, it took a long time. I decided to switch over to my restorer tool. I put a wire wheel on it and found that this was a better tool for the job. After I'm done with the wire wheel, I can pop that head off and put this flapper sanding wheel on it to knock down all of those sharp grooves left by the wire wheel. This kind of smoothed out that surface a bit and made it really nice to glide your hand across with no sharp edges. After that point, I'm going to get to sanding the top. Even though I passed this through my wide belt sander, I still have to go down to at least 100 grit to start out and work my way up all the way to 320 grit. The white belt sander is great. I find it's best for making sure everything is perfectly flat. It does, however, leave lines from the belts. It is an older machine, so you know what? I take the good with the bad a little bit on this one. Once all that sanding is done, it's time for oil. Now I'm using 
Rubio Monocoat Pure 2C Oil on this table. They claim it's a monocoat, one coat. I have never done one coat with it. I find it doesn't look finished after one coat. And when you add that second coat with Rubio and throw a third coat of their maintenance oil on, it just makes it pop and it looks so good. After I'm done oiling it, I wait five minutes, I wipe it down, make sure there's no excess on it, and I'm going to leave it sit like this for a day before I come back to it, flip it over, and get working on the bottom. For the legs, I used rectangular steel tubing. I hired a welder to build these for me, and these are my wife's design. Uh, she designed them for our dining table, and my customer really liked them, and they wanted the same ones. When I attach these, I like to make sure that if this table needs to get moved from maybe one house to another and another, they can take off the legs and put them back on with no concern about the leg becoming loose over time. I'm drilling 3 8 pilot holes and I'm using a depth stop to prevent myself from going too deep and potentially right through the top side of the table. I have accidentally done that before and let me tell you, it is a gross feeling. Luckily, I didn't go right clean through with the bit. I was able to push those wood pieces back down and save the tabletop. After I get my holes drilled, I like to go over them with a burring bit just to smooth out that shoulder and take a little bit of meat off of there so when my threaded insert goes in, it sits nice and just below flush of the surface of the bottom of the table. And for the bottom of the table, I am going to go ahead and use Rubio Monocoat on this as well and i am also going to do two coats of finish on here i won't do the third step with the maintenance oil i don't find it's necessary on the bottom of the table as it looks great with two coats i like to let the oil set up for two days before i flip the table back over and attach the legs to it once i get the legs attached i'll do my final steps of finishing on the top side and then this table is ready to go so I'm basically wrapped up right here. I didn't video the final steps of finishing because if I'm being totally honest with you, it was a nightmare with this table. I kept seeing sanding lines in the resin portion of the table. The wood looked great, but I could see these long lines running end to end on the table. So I ended up sanding this and refinishing it four times before I got it perfect. And what bugs me the most is I don't know what I did different on that fourth time. It just worked. Okay, so here's the faux live edge. And I gotta say, I really love how this turned out. And I would definitely do it again. My clients really like it. They think it's something unique. And man, look at this table. The way the black plays off the walnut. The grain in the slab is so beautiful. There's so many colors. I gotta say I'm really happy with this build. I hope you guys enjoyed watching this and if there's anything else you'd like to see I'd love to hear about it in the comments. Thanks for watching.